Morales, the elected president. Uh, Morales, this was last September, it's not ancient history. Uh, the uh, Morales responded by saying, thanking them for their support and saying that this is the first time in 500 years that Latin America has taken its fate into its own hands without the uh, intervention and control of uh, foreign powers. Recently, the last couple centuries, the United States. Well, that's really important. In fact, a mark of its importance is that it wasn't reported in the United States. It's far too important to be allowed to reach the public. So, I mean, it was mentioned that there was a meeting, but not what happened there. Okay, that's a real democratic election of a kind that we can't even dream of. But, uh, and it's not that unusual. There are other cases, but they're in the South, what we call the South, you know, the nons. Uh, there may really be a famous, what is called a clash of civilizations, but not of exactly the kind we think of. Uh, in any event, for the West, this is undoubtedly a historical, magical event. Um, it's understood what happened by the people who run campaigns here. Uh, the quadrennial extravaganzas that are called elections here are run by the public relations industry, the advertising industry. It's a huge industry which is dedicated to controlling beliefs and attitudes and opinions. Its main task is to undermine markets. Now, if you take an economics course, you learn that markets are based on informed consumers making rational choices, right? If you look at a television ad, you learn that what markets consist of is uninformed consumers making irrational choices. And so when you look at an ad for a car or a lifestyle drug or something, you don't expect to find information. Like in a market system, GM would have a five-second ad in which they say, here's the characteristics of our car. In a system dedicated to undermining markets, what you have is you know, a football player, a sexy actress, a car driving into the heavens or something or other. Uh, the, the point is to create a category of uninformed consumers making irrational choices uh, to sell your products and make profit. Okay? Now, the same institutions run elections, and they have the same goal to ensure that uninformed, uh, it's not consumers in this case, uninformed, uh, the uninformed electorate makes irrational choices. And they do it the same way, with glitz. You don't get to know what the candidates stand for. Issues are marginalized and suppressed. I mean, the McCain campaign was at least honest enough to say it outright. They said this election isn't going to be about issues, it's going to be about personalities and qualities and so on. The Obama campaign was basically the same. Uh, so it was marketing brand Obama. Uh, it was about hope and change and things like that, a kind of a blank slate where you can write your hopes and dreams. But issues are kept way to the side. I mean, if you're really energetic, you can look up the web page and find position papers on this and that. Uh, but that's not front and center. That's not what the elections are about. And for the most part, the electorate is uh, uninformed. We haven't seen polls yet about this election, but the, the last election, 2004, uh, Bush, I think some, maybe 10% of Bush voters even knew what his positions were. He was a nice guy, you know, the kind of guy you'd like to meet in a bar and have a drink with, and go, you know, running in 120 degrees sun with, and that sort of thing. He likes to shoot, and this and that and the other thing. Uh, so, for example, a majority of Bush voters uh, assumed that he was in favor of the Kyoto Protocol. The reason's obvious, you know, the population's in favor of it. It's obviously the right thing. He's a nice guy, he must be in favor. Uh, and in the case of Obama, it's pretty much the same. Uh, people think he stands for what I want. You know, why, on what basis? You can't accuse him of having misled anyone because he hadn't said it. He's kept to hope and change. Uh, well, you know, if you're, if you're an executive in the advertising industry and you have to sell a candidate in 2008 and you read the polls, which of course they do, and you know what's happening in the country, you know that 80% uh, of the country thinks that the country's going in the wrong direction. And uh, uh, the same, roughly the same 80% think that the country's run by a few big interests looking out for themselves, not for the population. 
by about uh, three to one, people want the campaigns to pay attention to issues, not personalities, but those polls you forget because that's no good. Uh, you also know that uh, on a host of major issues, domestic and international, uh, the two political organizations, two factions of the business party, are way to the right of the population. So you have good reason to keep away from issues, kind of like selling toothpaste. You, know, you don't want people to know what it does to you. So. Uh, Issues are to the side. It's, it's qualities, uh, body language. Uh, I remember to torture myself, I sometimes turn on NPR while I'm driving somewhere. And after the uh, one of the debates, Clinton-Obama, Clinton-Obama debate, I happened to be turning it on, and they had the uh, political analyst of the, uh, of the New York Times was being interviewed, and they were talking about the debate. I listened for about 10 minutes. Uh, the discussion was about the first moment of the debate when apparently the two, can the two walked in and Obama held Clinton's chair while she sat down. And the question is, what was his body language like? Was it uh, condescending, you know, like little woman, get out of here? Or was it deferential, like black boy talking to white lady? And that was essentially the discussion. That's, and, and much of the discussion about the campaign is like that. Anything except what matters. And there's a good reason, kind of reasons I mentioned. And the guys who run the campaign are well aware of it. Uh, the advertising industry gives an award every year for the best marketing campaign of the year. And guess who won it in 2008? Obama. He beat out Apple. This was the best marketing campaign of the year, and uh, it's, it's in the business press. They quoted uh, top executives who were just ecstatic. They said, we've been marketing candidates like commodities ever since Reagan, and this is the best we've ever done. It's going to change the corporate culture. CEOs are going to pick up the style and do it the same way, and so on. So yeah, it was a great marketing campaign, and now the army of supporters are supposed to be sitting there waiting for their instructions from the leader and who'll tell them what you're supposed to do next. Kind of like the opposite of democracy. But that can't be quite different from, say, Bolivia. Uh, radically different. But it's very hard to, to, to I just can't enter the intellectual culture here. It's too inconsistent with the view that we're supposed to have of ourselves and the way our society works. Unfortunately, it's, it's accurate. And as I say, the population knows it. That's why 80% think that uh, the government is run by a few big interests looking out for themselves, not for the people. Now, how do you, it, there are, there, there's good political science work on the predicting uh, policies on the basis of many factors. And the factor that is the best predictor is financing. That is extremely good work on this done by a very good political economist at UMass, Thomas Ferguson, calls it the investment theory of politics. Uh, he's studied in detail elections for, you know, 100 years and uh, viewing elections as occasions on which groups of investors coalesce to invest to control the state. And then you try to predict from the groups of investors who funded the campaigns uh, what the policies are going to look like. And it's a remarkably good predictor considering a complex system like this. Well, apply, applying that to... Uh, this campaign, we want to know who's funding it. Well, the propaganda is that you know, it's a lot of small contributions over the internet and so on and so forth, which is not totally false, but it's pretty misleading. Uh, the final data aren't in, but the Washington Post uh, tried to estimate it and estimated that uh, about 25% uh, of the contributions were from contributors of under $200, small contributors. The massive contributions appear to be from the financial industries. Uh, they much preferred Obama to McCain, so they funded him way beyond McCain, and uh, that showed in the vote. Uh, he was also had major support from uh, uh, law firms. That doesn't mean civil rights lawyers. It means lobbyists and uh, a couple of other concentrations of power.